With agentic AI becoming a required skill in the workspace, RAG is becoming an important tool to help your AI agents retrieve relevant data in real time, improve response accuracy, and enhance task automation. In this tutorial, I will walk you through how to use RAG in Phi Data to enhance AI agents' capability by enabling them to retrieve relevant information from a knowledge database. If you don't know what RAG is, RAG stands for Retrieval Augmented Generation, a way to make AI models smarter by letting them pull in fresh, reliable information before giving an answer. Normally, AI models from OpenAI, Meta, Google, and Anthropic are trained on a huge amount of data, but they don't automatically update with the latest knowledge or knowledge not available to the public. RAG fixes this by allowing the AI to search for the latest or most relevant information, like looking something up in a trusted source before responding. This means businesses or individuals can connect AI to their own knowledge base without retraining the entire model, making AI responses more accurate, relevant, and useful while keeping costs down. Here's a diagram to illustrate a typical LLM workflow and how RAG will fit into the picture. The process kicks off when a user inputs a prompt along with a query into the system. This could be anything from a simple question to a complex request that requires additional context to generate a meaningful response. Once the system gets the query, it doesn't immediately send it off to the language model. Instead, it first searches for relevant information to enhance the response. This means the system checks existing knowledge sources like databases, documents, or APIs to gather additional data that might be useful in crafting a better answer. And here's where RAG comes into play. After the search, the system retrieves the most relevant information that can provide better context. This ensures that the response isn't just based on a generic understanding, but incorporates additional high quality insights. Now that we have the original prompt, the query, and enhanced context, this enriched package is sent over to the large language model endpoint. This means the AI now has more context, making its response more accurate, relevant, and informative compared to a standard AI model that only works with the prompt alone. In the final step, the AI model processes the input and generates a text response. Since it had access to additional context, the response should be more aligned with the user's intent, providing better insights, accuracy, and relevance. The system then takes the AI-generated response and presents it to the user. I know there are still many people who are brand new to RAG or have heard about it but have never personally implemented it before. I will go through the entire process, from creating a vector database to vector embedding. There are quite a few RAG database options out there today. Pinecone, ChromaDB, QGen are some of the large players in the vector database space. You can even use Postgres and Redis as RAG database. My personal favorite is LensDB, an open source multimodal AI developer friendly vector database specifically for AI applications. And this will be the database I will be using in this tutorial. To be honest, Phi Data's documentation is very, what should I say, lack of information? There are many functions and modules I have to go through the source code to figure out how to properly use them. And lack of examples is another key area Phi Data can really improve. And for this project, I will be sharing a complete example how to convert HTML files from Zillow into Markdown files and load the Markdown files into a Lens database as a knowledge base. Here's a diagram to illustrate the flow. We will first save HTML files that contains property listings from Zillow's website, then convert the HTML files into Markdown files. We will then create a knowledge database and load the Markdown files as knowledge source. And in the last step, I will show you how to retrieve information from a knowledge database with your agent. When adding knowledge files into a knowledge database, 
text-based files like regular text files, markdown files, or even CSV and JSON files are good choices due to they are easy to process and lightweight. To convert text into embeddings, I will be using OpenAI's embedding API. There are many open source and paid services available, but the end result should all be very similar, if not the same. To get started, launch your terminal and run the command showing on the screen to install the Python libraries. If you are using generative model providers other than OpenAI like Gemini or Anthropic, you will need to install their Python library separately. I already saved property listing pages for San Francisco and Seattle. For demonstration purpose, I will show you how to do it once manually and you can figure out the rest of the pages. I will share how we can automate the process with Playwright in a separate video. But for now, I want to keep everything beginner friendly. Navigate to Zillow's website and search for San Francisco and Seattle's property listings. Zillow uses dynamic loading to update the content without reloading the entire page. We need to scroll down to the last listing to ensure all the properties are loaded. Right click and click inspect to launch the developer tool window to display the HTML source code. You can also use the keyboard shortcut F12 to launch the developer tool. When you launch the developer tool window, it should automatically highlight the HTML element associated to the inspected section. If not, hover your mouse to the target element and inspect again. Copy the element block to a text file and save it as an HTML file in your project directory. By saving just the relevant HTML markup, we can keep file size smaller, filter out unnecessary information, and also decrease knowledge retrieval time. Open one of the HTML files to make sure all the relevant data are in the file. The next step is to convert Zillow HTML files into Markdown files. Microsoft released an open source library called Markdown to convert files like HTML, JSON, Word docs into Markdown files. This is the library I am using to convert the HTML files into Markdowns. I also created a simple desktop utility to simplify HTML to Markdown conversion procedure. If you are a Patreon paid member, you can find the download link to the utility in the description below. After you convert the HTML files to Markdown files, delete the HTML files or move them somewhere else. For the first part, we have been mostly doing the preparation work. Now we are ready to create the knowledge base. Launch your code editor and create a Python file. Name the file loadknowledge.py. Import the Python libraries showing on the screen. To create the knowledge database and load the knowledge documents, create the init knowledge base and load knowledge documents functions. In file data, you connect a knowledge base to an agent using one of the knowledge base classes. There are actually quite a few, like CSV knowledge base, LangChain knowledge base, and so on. The init knowledge base function will initialize a text knowledge instance with the given knowledge path. If the knowledge base doesn't exist, it will go ahead and create the knowledge base database. Let's look at the text knowledge base creation. Path is the knowledge base directory. Formats lists the file formats to be included in the knowledge base. We then assign the vector database object to be used to store the knowledge base. In this case, lens db. In the lens db object, specify the table name where the knowledge base will be stored and URI for the database directory path. For the search type, set it to vector. By data has its own embedding class to automate document embedding. Here, all we need to do is uh, assign the embedder class and the text knowledge base class will handle the rest. Keep in mind that the embedder class will only embed 
document that haven't been processed. To load the knowledge documents, in this case, the markdown files containing Zillow property listings call the load knowledge documents function. If you set the recreate value to true, it will re-upload the documents even if knowledge data already exists. By setting the recreate value to false, it will only upload documents that have not already been uploaded. The rest of the functions are used to manage the knowledge database. List knowledge documents function will return the document metadata. Delete knowledge and drop knowledge database functions are used to delete records and knowledge database directory. Now let me show you how to use the functions. Let's call the init knowledge base function to create the knowledge database directory and database. Next, call the load knowledge documents function to load the knowledge markdown files. When LensDB load the knowledge files based on the content size, it will chunk the knowledge into multiple document records, similar to NoSQL. If we run the list knowledge documents function, it will return the metadata in the knowledge database. I will skip the delete knowledge function. But using that function, you can specify the query to delete the document records that match the query string. If we run the drop knowledge database function, it will delete the knowledge database directory completely. Let's recreate the knowledge database. Now let me show you how to retrieve information from a knowledge database with an AI agent. Create a blank Python file. Create an instance of the knowledge database we just created and construct an agent instance. In the agent creation, assign the knowledge object as the knowledge source. At this point, whenever you send a request to the AI agent, the agent will first search through the knowledge base for the relevant information, combining with its training data to give a more tailored and polished output. Let's ask the agent to give us the property detail for 925 Geary Street in San Francisco. Oh, forgot to specify the knowledge directory. Let me fix that and try again. And looks like we need pandas package as well. Let me install the package real quick. Okay, let's try again. The agent is using GPT-40 mini model. It took about six seconds to go through the table and retrieve the information. If you are using GPT-40 model, it will take a bit longer. If we look at the output, the price is correct. Apartment type and bathroom count is correct. Unit size is correct. It also returns the three images associated to the listing. Let's try one more to call it a day. This time, let's ask the agent to give us the properties in Seattle where listing price is less than $3,000. And here's the list. It only returns the first 10 items. I should be more precise with my prompt. But overall, the agent has executed both requests to retrieve information from the Zillow Knowledge Database successfully. And that's everything I will be covering in this tutorial. Hopefully, you find the video useful. I will be covering other RAG databases like ChromaDB, Pinecone, and QGent and other knowledge types in separate videos, so stay tuned. If there are other things you would like me to cover, leave them in the comments below. Also, if you are a Patreon member, you can download the source code from the link in the description below. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe. Happy coding! See you in the next one.